Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the taxability of social security benefits. There's a lot of confusion about whether social security benefits is taxable or not. In this recording, I will try to explain this concept. In this way, you'll be able to compute the amount, whether an amount is taxable or not. Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at the taxability of social security benefits. There's a lot of confusion whether social security benefit is taxable or not. And the answer is, it all depends. It depends on something called modified adjusted gross income or provisional adjusted gross income. So in this session, I will try to explain this concept. But if you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, especially if you're a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you check out my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course. You keep it. I can't replace it, but I can be a useful addition. I can explain the material a little bit differently than your CPA review course, which will help you understand it better, thus increasing your score by 10 to 15 points. Your risk is one month of subscription. Your potential gain is passing the exam itself. And if not for anything, check out my website to determine how well your university is doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other courses and CPA sections. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. Like my recording, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So let's take a look at the taxability of income. Well, the taxability of social security benefit depends on something we call the modified or provisional income. And of course, it depends on your filing status. Okay. The effect of the rules is to exclude social security benefit for for people who are in the lower individual tax bracket. Simply put, if you don't make a lot of money, okay, if you're in a low tax bracket, none of your social security benefit is taxable. If you are slightly a higher tax bracket, up to 85%. So you could have zero social, none of it is taxable up to 85%. So this is, this is what it could be, zero to 85%. Now, first, how do we compute this provisional modified income? That's the first thing you want to know. Well, we're going to take your adjusted gross income before social security. So we're going to look at uh, Take out Social Security, compute your adjusted gross income, then add any interest on U.S. savings bonds that was excluded for educational purposes. It means you received interest. It was not included in your income. Add most tax exempt interest. Add employer provided adoption benefit. Add foreign income, uh, excluded foreign income. Add deducted interest on educational loans. Add deductions, tuitions and fees and then add, remember, 50% of your social security. Why are they adding all of this? Because all of these, the risk is somebody is getting social security, they will invest all their money in tax exempt interests, and by doing so, uh, they will not, it will not be taxable, the, the, uh, the, the interest on the tax exempt interest will not be taxable, and their social security uh, is not taxable as well. So what they're saying, it's not fair. What we need to do is if you have anything that's tax exempt and usually on the CPA exam, usually they'll give you, ta they have tax exempt interest. And in the real world, usually it's people will have tax exempt interest that they have to add to their gross income. Okay. But that's what they have to do. They have to add certain items to arrive to uh, something called provisional or modified income or modified adjusted gross income. That's the first thing we need to do. Then after we compute this, then we have to follow this formula that's going to show us how to determine whether the amount, whether the amount of social security is taxable or not. So here's how it works. First, I'm going to go over the formula for married filing jointly. And it works the same way for single head of a household qualifying widow or widower. First of all, if you if your provisional income is below 32,000, so it's below this amount, you're good. You don't have to worry about anything. It means zero of your social security is taxable. Then you, it, you your provisional could be between 32 and 44. Okay, so you're in the middle in, in between 32 and 44. The taxable portion of the benefit, if the income is between those two limit, is the lesser of 50% of your social security benefit or 50% of the access of provisional income over 32,000. Okay, so we're going to look, what's the provisional income over 42,000? We're going to take 50% of it and compare that to 50% of your benefit. And we're going to take the lesser of those two numbers. If, if now, if your provisional income is above 44,000, 
taxable income taxable portion of benefit if provisional income is above the limit we're going to take the lesser of 85 percent of the benefit or 85 percent of the excess of provisional income over 44,000 plus the lesser of either 6,000 married filing jointly or 50 percent of your benefit so you tag that to it and if you are single they have different different figures remember if you are single they have different figures but the concept is the same the best way to illustrate these concepts guess what is to actually work an example okay let's take a look at it robert and cindy file a joint return so we're looking here so we're looking here so we're looking here their agi before social security is fifteen thousand, and they receive eight thousand of benefit which is social security benefit Okay, they had no items to add back. So first thing, compute their provisional income. Well, we're gonna take their AGI plus 50% of their social security. Therefore, their provisional income is 19,000. Who well, guess what? 19,000 is below 32. No social security is benefit is taxable. Karen files a return as a qualifying widow, which is, will bring us here to this table. She received 7,000 in social security benefit, 19,000 of interest income, and 5,000 of non-taxable municipal bond interest. First, compute the provisional income. Be careful here what we're asking. Compute the provisional income. We're going to take uh, a ha uh, half of the social security plus 19,000 plus 5,000 which is provisional income is 27,500. This provisional income puts puts Karen in this right here in the middle. Now we have to look at the the taxable portion will be 50% the lesser of 50% of the benefit which is 3,500 or 50% of the excess amount 25 or for 25,000. So we have to find out what's the excess amount over 25,000, which is 2,500. Okay, let's do that. So, so the taxable income will be the less equal to the lesser of 50% of social security, which is 3,500 or the excess at uh, 50% of the excess of the income over 25,000. Remember, we only have 2,500 times 50% is 1,250. Therefore, the excess is, the, the taxable benefit is 1,250. That's the taxable benefit. So of the 7,000, of the 7,000 that she received, 1,250 is taxable. The remaining is tax free. The remaining is tax free. Let's take a look at this third example. CNM file a joint return showing interest and dividend of 46,000, self-employment income for Carlson, 31,000, and non-taxable muni bond of 10,000. They excluded 1,000 of interest on educational loan and they received social security of 9,000. The first thing we do is we compute their provisional income, okay, which is for, for uh, their self-employment uh, plus uh, their dividend income, plus the self-employment, plus the 10,000 of mini bond, plus the 1,000 of interest that they excluded on deduction loans, we have to add it back, plus 50% of their social security. Notice here, they are married filing jointly, they are above 44. Therefore, we're going to be working with this section here. Well, they would report taxable income equal to the lesser of 85% of the social security benefit, which is 7,650, that's one figure, or 85% of the access of provisional income over 44,000, which is the amount is 41,225, plus, plus the lesser of 6,000, which is given in the formula, or 50% of social security benefit. 50% of social security benefit is 4,500. Okay, therefore their taxable income is 7,000, I'm sorry, their taxable benefit, not their taxable income, their taxable benefit is 7,650 because this number is gonna be lower than this number. Think about it, um, 41,225, 85% of that is way over 7,650. Therefore they received uh, 7,650 is taxable and the remaining is tax free. So notice here, 
of their social security benefit is taxable. So this is how we compute the social security tax benefit. Now on the CPA exam, they usually don't, they usually don't, 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 don't expect you to memorize the formula, these formulas, but you have to know that you could have zero, none of it is taxable, or if you are in between, you could have up to 50% of your income is taxable. And if they gave you a large number, once the, once the number is too large, just think of it 85% of their social security is taxable. So this is basically a shortcut, okay? At the end of this recording, I'm going to remind you to visit my website, farhatlectures.com, especially if you are studying for your CBA exam. Study hard, good luck, and most importantly, stay safe.